Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode... I actually have no idea. 32? Um, something like that. Uh, if you are a regular podcast watcher, we are in store for all the normal things. And if you are new, then I will tell you what those are. So we're going to go over finished objects from the week, um, whips, plans, acquisitions. I actually don't have any fiber things to share this week. Um, but I usually do talk about some spinning things and, uh, just like, what's up? What's up in the world of um, my life <laughs> in the yarn world? Uh, and I do have something to share this week, which is our trip to La Mercerie. So, so many things to share, aka a lot of yarn. <sighs> a lot of yarn in my life right now. Um, it's not a bad thing. I have a plan too, to tell you about something else <laughs> too. We'll talk about those at the end. Okay, so let's just get into it. First, the finished object. So this week's finished object is also what I'm wearing. Yes, you guys, we're gonna finally be done talking about this. <laughs> it's so exciting. Uh, this is the Calm Down Cardigan. It is a pattern by Lily Kate France, who is Lily Kate Makes on Instagram and YouTube. And, um, this is a make with friends. So I don't even know if I've said that in a few weeks, but, uh, I cast this on with all of the most of nearly all of the Pacific knit West friend group I have here in Seattle who we all knit together. Um, and our friends in the Bay area. And there's like six or seven of them also, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and I think at least five of them cast this on, right? So it was like a big group of people. Let's call it 10 people at least cast this on, which is so fun. So it was a great group of people to encourage each other to get it done, partly because one of the gals in San Francisco had already made this. So she let us know that this is a bit of a we like to call a slog. Um, not so much that anything in the pattern is hard or there's any parts that are really terrible. It's more just that there are some features of the pattern uh, and like maybe the gauge also um, and also how oversized it is for most people that make it a bit of a long-term project. So we cast this on November 1st and now I finally have my done. I am not last, which is <laughs> surprising because I really thought I would just be the end. Um, we've got several people who still have to finish and um, I'm hoping my being done will give everybody a little bit of motivation. It's like every time someone finishes and then posts the pictures or anything in our channel um, that we have like an Instagram chat, it encourages other people to make some forward, forward momentum. At least it did for me. So every time someone finished, I was like, oh, right that's a project I should probably spend a little more time knitting on. So, um, let me give you details and then I'll stand up and we'll talk about it. Um, I will, as I'm doing details right now, put a picture up of what I look like wearing this. I have not taken a picture yet, but I will do one right after this because it's nice outside and my makeup is done. Kind of, I don't have anything under my eyes today and you can tell they're like, <sighs> puffy. It was a long weekend. Um, okay. Well, that's okay. I will still take pictures so that I can have them done. What are the details? The details are that, um, I am, I made a size four, which is 51.5 inches, uh, across the recommended ease is 10 to 12 inches. So in theory, that'd be someone who's like typically a, I guess probably a large, I think I just went down one size. Um, you know, 41 or 39 inch bust or whatever. That's recommended. My bust, as a reminder, or if you're new, we talk about this a lot just because I want you to actually know uh, if I tell you what I'm making and what size, what size I am, that gives you a lot of ideas. Um, I am a 47 inch bust, roughly. Um, I think all of those things very much depend on, you know, time of the month and whether or not I've been working out a lot and all the other things, right? So, um, I made this with the recommended needle sizes, which there were three of them. So it's four millimeter needles for the body, uh, 
3.5 for the button band and 3.75 for the ribbing, which is um, cuffs and hem. Plus, that's how you start your shoulder panels, which I will show you like a close up of that too. And then um, I made this with Wooly Knit uh, Cone, Merino Cone, which is, I mean, I use two of them. Um, they are 500 grams each. That's this, you know, I guess you could get this. I'm not sure. Some of the Wooly Knit stuff you can also get in balls, but anyway, this one I got cones. Um, and this color is called Bayas, and it's 100% non superwash merino. It's. Uh, 257 yards for 100 grams when held double. So 514 single, it's like 2,500 plus on a skein, right? Or on a skein, a cone. It's a lot of yarn. I have yarn left over. So before I stand up, I'll also go through because I actually did <laughs> some stats for you so you know what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to be a 51.5 inch bust. When I, this is like the only way I feel, I felt like I could really measure because I didn't want to like leave a gap with the button. When I measured this, I buttoned it. So, right. And it was just, it was exactly 50 inches. The button overlap is about an inch. So I'm maybe a half inch less engaged. I also, when I blocked this, did not really separate my ribbing that goes down the side very much because it's like in an awkward place. So you can't like block because of sleeves. You can't block a cardigan completely open. So and I didn't want to have any weird gaps or a lot of cover over because the way you block is the way it's going to sit on you a little bit. Anywho, I just let it ride and they look fine. It's just not super open. So that could have given me a tiny bit more, you know, um, in inches around. So I'm just about 51 inches uh, across at the body, the main part of the body. Um... I used, um, I did some math. I used about 653, um, grams. I say about because I measured this when I had buttons on. I subtracted the weight of the buttons, but all buttons are a little bit different, you know, whatever. We're very close to that. 653, um, grams of yarn. So I did need two cones. I would not have been able to complete without two cones. I knew that. I did estimate like I think the estimate was seven maybe seven and a little bit um balls of yarn to complete this but obviously like I think that depends on a lot that's just the estimate that that she gave with you know I'm sure some overage etc like even 10% would get me just about that that's 10% so um and that is 1678 yards of yarn so it's a lot of yarn um that was part of it is like, regardless, <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. 1,678 yards of yarn when held double. So total yardage, I guess like that's the DK weight. Um, total yardage is double that. So 3,200, right? That's because I use more than one cone. Um, 3,300 and something. So this is definitely, you know, six and a half balls. I think it's so interesting. So some yarns you're going to get, and we talked about this when we did stash stuff, will be about 10% over anyway. So you could maybe get away with this with six balls of yarn, but there's like so many limiting factors to that. I would probably have still gotten seven if I did not do it out of this yarn and just had a half a ball left over, or, you know, maybe even a full skein. I could have had an entire skein left over and, um, I don't love to play yarn chicken. I already lost once this year. So yeah. Anywho, um, it's a lot of yarn. Okay, so that's what I was saying is like, regardless, like knitting up 1600 yards is a lot. It's a significant amount of time per yards, right? That's a good way to measure it. Not just that this is a size large and, you know, whatever. It's just like, it was, it was a lot of yarn, a lot of stitches. Um, okay, I am going to get up now and I'm going to move my chair. So I'll reset and you'll see me in a second. Okay, here we are. It is oversized. It's still oversized on me. Um, I think it hits my bust okay. And I, I'm i glad I did not do a bigger size because I think it would have been like a ton of extra fabric over here, obviously, because it would have been more ease. But like, I feel like it would have felt bag-like, right? That was the sort of the worry for me. It sits nice. Um, I am uh, glad... 
I love the color. Obviously, you guys knew I was so excited to wear this color. It's great. Uh, you can see some of the details. So this is where you start in your saddle shoulder and that, you know, lovely detail continues. You also get some of that detail here, which then is what I'm talking about. Meets also the back is the same and it meets down the side. So it's double the width of here you know, down the middle because you keep all of that ribbing. I love that. I think that's the cutest detail. Like, I don't know how often I'm going to be around with my arm up for anyone to see it, but it's really cute. Um, you can see it when you're wearing it a little bit. Like, it, I'm kind of in shadow right now, but you can see it, you know, if I was doing something, someone could see the side. Um, you will see, like, there's these little pops of bright color. This yarn is generally one color but um you know with the milling process that they use there's sometimes these like little colored fluffs that are not quite as standard some of them are black too so this is like a little black fluff um I only cut off one or two that were very large um and kind of distracting this one I don't know I might cut off too because I, I can like feel it uh but yeah I didn't cut the yarn while I met them when I was knitting. I just want to see how they would uh, react when I washed it. So um, you will see this sleeve is big. I, we've talked about this before, I have a larger upper arm circumference and this is still like <laughs> significantly large on me. And even though there are decreases, you never decrease a ton. Um, that's one change I did make. I think we, we minorly talked about last week was um, what I did at, at the cuffs, which I just, um, as a reminder, last week I had one sleeve done and none, not even the other one picked up. And so I finished the whole thing this week. I blocked it. I did everything. I put on buttons, which I said I needed to have picked out immediately. So I would have them done. I will show you, I did a small button on the inside of my large button, um, which I can talk about why in a second, but yeah, overall, I'm super pleased with how it came out. I really love it. This little notched behavior down here is cute. Um, I think it's flattering. I do think like, you know, an oversized cardigan is just like generally cute. I did, I was wearing this the other, like I wore this on Friday. It's like kind of really fun and freeing to wear just like with one button. Um, these buttonholes are so cute. They turned out so great without you know, now you can see it without any like extra strings hanging around and they're very like, they're sleek. She did a great job with that. Okay. Now I'm reset. Um, okay. So what is, I want to talk about for things. Oh, the button. I did the button inside because, uh, I was like watching an Instagram video or something and someone mentioned, and my mom even agreed after I told her, I was like, oh, I might do a small button inside. She was like, yeah. So this, um, and she has lots of experience sewing clothes, uh, but buttons cause stress on fabric, right? Because you're tying kind of tight on yarn. And as you button them, you are pulling, you know, against that fabric. So it's sort of like a counterweight that you're doing the small button so that the, it can't continue to pull on those two or whatever stitches that you're yarn is attached to it pulls on the other button itself so you're not like making as much friction or you know whatever on the fabric itself and it's like unlikely that the button will pop it's not less likely the button will pop off or that you will somehow damage those knit stitches underneath so that is what I did um did I make any other changes I just changed the cuffs. Um, I, once that you have a couple of decreases in the cuff. I mean, also because the cuff is like four inches long. So the way that the um, decreases happen, and this is my decrease line right here, uh, is that, you know, they're happening at regular intervals. And then this is a lot of space. So they're also happening at regular intervals, intervals here. And you can see what that looks like. She kept a line. It's actually pearl stitches in the middle, which is really nice. And it looks great. I think that looks really, that's a slick way to do uh, decreases inside of a single rib, um, like a one by one rib. It looks really nice. So I kept that same thing. So I ended up with the same amount of stitches at the end. Um, I did all of my ends are tubular bind off. Oh, the other thing that I, I changed, which I mentioned before, was just um, the cast off I used at the end of my uh, button band, which is I cast on tubular and cast off the sun bind off. 
um, which is not what was in the pattern. And I think it looks much nicer than what is written in the pattern without a lot of extra effort. Uh, what would I change? Would I wear this? Would I make this again? I mean, it's a little hard because I've only worn it once. I wore it on Friday pre-buttons. I had them picked out. I had it blocked, but I had just finished drying before we left and I wanted to take it on. I wanted to wear it on Friday out and about. Um, and, but yeah, I, I don't know I'd make it again because it was arduous, but if I did, I would potentially just change some of the dimensions because I don't know that I, I mean, maybe I'll change my mind, but like, I don't know that this is sleeve is so necessary. <laughs> I think it would be really flattering still if it was, you know, four inches less total in circumference, maybe five and just, you know, knit more body, um, before joining or, you know, join earlier then knit more rows of body before getting to the you know the little notch thing I like the notch thing I'd probably keep that if I did it again because I do think it looks really nice from the front um but yeah just having less sleeve both less sleeve to knit which this whole thing would take less yarn if you did that because the sleeve is a significant portion of the yarn because it's huge <laughs> it's like it's like pants. Like I could, I don't have small legs. I feel like I could put my legs inside of these sleeves. Um, anyway, I, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, a lot of the pieces of the construction because she just, it's very thoughtful. It was my first, um, applied double knit button band. The last time I did a double knit button band, which was for the Leith cardigan, which was my first knit cardigan, everyone. I'm not, I'm, I'm new to the cardigan game. Um, that was done, um, I, I did a double knit and, and, uh, mattress stitch it on or sewed it on as I went. I'm going to make my next cardigan likely. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll throw something else in there before, but, um, one of the ones I'm going to make this year is the field day for my mom with the Outlander yarn I got her. And that one is knit at the same time that you're making your garment. And it's like, I made the moon set tea. So it's, moonset t adjacent where that like um the v-neck is something that you do while you're making it it's just that the v-neck actually continues all the way down the body right and it is as the um button man instead which is pretty fun um yeah okay that's all i have to say about this sorry that was a long time to talk about this one knit but it was a really long time in the making and I want to share my thoughts on it. I can like recap at the end of this year when I talk about all the things I made whether or not I really love wearing it. Um, so far I feel cute in it but partly because I just really love this color so much. Okay one thing I'm gonna do because I have 350 almost 350 yards left or uh, grams left is that of total um, between the two cones. I did not, I weighed this, not the cone. So I think my Pinot cone was a little bit short of 500. So I could be a little bit short of that. So essentially I have three skeins of DK weight yarn or three skeins of light fingering. I guess like I could get a lot more yardage if I did light fingering, but I want to make a matching tank top because I feel like it would be so cute. Like matching sets are, I think like a thing right now. Um, I've seen like a lot of pictures and I, think it would be so fun to do something that has like a bunch of texture. I don't know if I would like lace or if I want to do something cable-y. I have not picked a pattern. I do not know what I will make. If you have suggestions, let me know. Um, I really like this as a tank top. I really like this kind of higher neckline, like something that's not going to have a lot of like sleeve that's a little bit smaller. Um, because this is so oversized, like I, I, I yeah, I want to be comfortable in it. I don't want to get too warm. Um, but yeah, I think something fitted and this is so oversized, but being the same color, but having a texture, I think it would be so fun. I definitely don't think I want anything V-neck. I think I'd want to have something like this, like a different neckline so that you don't get like a competing angle or, you know, other things like that. So if you have an idea, let me know. Uh, but I would feel like that would be very exciting and definitely a project I was not planning to do this year, but like, maybe I will. Who knows? We never know what's going to happen. Okay. Um, let's talk about my next projects. I actually am going to skip two this week because there are two that I just didn't work on, which is one I really need to work on because what it's March 17th. It's Sunday, March 17th. I did. I am filming on Sunday, which I said last week I would do because we were gone. 
on Saturday. And by the time I got back yesterday, like I was absolutely not going to do anything that required any amount of effort. <laughs> um, uh, but so my instant crush pullover just got like zero attention this week, partly because it was a shorter week at home. I did take it with me to work on at, um, when we went overnight, but I got distracted with this other thing and I just, I need to sit down and give it like two nights this week, I think, and I will make significant progress, but I'm not going to show it to you because I didn't pick it up. Um, the other one I'm going to skip is my flower vortex blanket. I did make one other uh, flower, but I have not sewn anything together right now. So just showing you a couple flowers seems like not that fun. Um, but I only made like one and a quarter, a started one. Um, I did like the middle part, which is not even a quarter really. But uh, I, yeah, I also partly that one is like, I pull out a lot of yarn because I'm not sure what I'm going to do and kind of grab bag, just pull things out. Um, and it's stressful how much yarn I have upstairs for that. So <laughs> I need to, yeah, maybe just make coordinated color bags or something. I don't really know. Anyway, I did not do much th this week on that. What I did work on was my clay sweater by my, I mean, not for me, the clay sweater I'm working on. So I am making, um, the clay sweater, which is a pattern by Ozetta or H Haley Smedley, who is Ozetta on Instagram. Um, and it is a top down drop shoulder garter textured pullover. Um, it has kind of a high neck na neckline. I am making the size large, which is 51 and a half inches. Weirdly similar to this one. Um, the recommended ease is 10 to 11 positive inches. So very similar feel and fit as what this is supposed to be. Um, this one, however, I am not making for myself. I'm making for my sister-in-law who is a bit smaller than me, but like this is the size that we picked when we measured her. Um, and then I'm using five millimeter needles for the body and 4.5 for, it was supposed to be just the neckline, but I decided to also use 4.5 millimeters for the cuff of the sleeve I finished. I am using Backloop Yarn Co. Basic DK in the color Flamingo, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It's 231 yards for 100, for 100 grams. Sorry. And um, I made progress, not like the most progress but I feel like good I feel good um a sleeve again even on this one I felt like the sleeves are a little bit big maybe not big but like it's roomy for sure um it did go by faster I was glad about it so th so part this looks a little bit small I think if I made it for myself I probably would add a little bit of room it definitely does sit off the shoulder though and like it would I mean, it would go to my arm. I think this is about where it sits on me. Um, but Cress is shorter than me. Seemingly her ring span would be a little bit shorter than mine. I went to just the uh, recommended decrease spot and then I just started the cuff. And I, um, the cuff is two by two rib. And again, I did change my needle. So I changed, I think because I prefer the way that this looks is like when you change your needle size, I always do one round just knit um, before going to like the ribbing. Cause I think that does like cinch it in a little before you get to it. Um, yeah, so it's smaller than the, like Ozetta's pictured like this. I mean, hold on. I don't want to put my whole arm into it because I feel lazy. Um, but if I pull this up to like where it would sit on my arm, like it's, it's hugging my wrist. It's not like going to be as floppy as say this sleeve. And you can tell that just like looking at it, like it's going to be a more fitted um, cuff, which is nice. Partly because she's a mom. So she, I know she's going to like be pushing her sleeves up too. And like, that's maybe an unfortunate thing about this one is like, you can push it up and it, it'll hit like way up by like most of my um, forearm is where it kind of sits, not snugly, but it's, you know, more secure there. But like, this is a significant amount of fabric. <laughs> for me to be like contending with if I really did push my sleeve up I think it would just push it right back down um that's fine that's not a big deal but I guess it we will see if that deters me from like wearing this or like if it, I will be like more situationally aware of 
if I need to be, if I think I need, uh, you know, it's going to be warm or, or I'll need to be doing this that like, I won't pick this anyway. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So I have one sleeve done. This is the back. So this is the left sleeve I have done. Whoop. Um, the front has just very clean lines on it. And the back has that like really nice sloped shoulder, um, join line. And yeah, I like it. I showed it to my sister-in-law Caressa yesterday. Her um, daughter turned three and uh, actually today is her birthday. So um, we, uh, yeah, we had a birthday party, which I did join after Bainbridge. And um, yes, it was hard. <laughs> we'll talk more about that. But uh, I had this with me and I got dropped off with all my stuff at their house. And so I, um, got to show this to her live and she was like oh. I, I just I had she has not seen the yarn live I've sent her a picture of it she doesn't watch the podcast and I don't really know that she's on um I haven't really posted anything about this on Instagram I guess so she didn't really know what it was like looking like um and she loves it so that's a win I feel great about that I'm gonna do the next sleeve then I'll go back to the body and that'll be a great place to be um in in the next week or so I um, don't have a deadline for this. This is just a, a make to make for uh, my sister-in-laws. Um, we'll talk about the second sweater that's coming after this one. This is like my gift knit needle. So the way I've been thinking this year is to have um, not 20 things on my needles, which let's say if we ignore the two things on my hooks, which are baby blankets, I really have still five things five slotted needles and five things that I have projects for um one of which is like so I really only have four knit projects going right now um because I still have not cast on my Haley's um sweater which <laughs> we'll talk about uh but I want to keep it about five and one of those uh, you know allotted slots or needles is going to be my gift nets this year so I don't have three gift nets at once or feel really like stressed later in the year I'm not like even I don't have a deadline for any of them so like even if it was a really slow burn for this needle I would be fine with it I like to just get projects done um because like this one it feels like mentally arduous to just have them around for so long <laughs> so I'd like to get them off on and off the needles um yeah so my second sister-in-law hers is coming soon okay let's talk about the baby sea turtle baby blanket um this pattern is a free pattern um which I you know, I love a free pattern. I love a free pattern for a baby blanket because I'm not likely to make the same baby blanket over and over. I tend to pick baby blankets like either based on what the parents tell me they want like a color scheme or they like like the flower baby blanket, which is um, I'm not showing today. Like my cousin picked that out and I showed them a couple of patterns because he and his wife said that they wanted flowers, right? So that was one of several that I sent to them. Um, this one is sea turtles on like a ocean and, and sand landscape. I'm not going to make that again, likely. I mean, maybe somebody else would really love sea turtles, but like, uh, maybe, probably not. <laughs> I like them to be a little bit unique, you know, go with the nursery, go with whatever kind of theme they want. There are a couple I've made like, um, Pearl Soho based free patterns that I really love and would recommend if somebody had like no idea what they wanted and um but I think it's also like I really enjoy making baby blankets but I also don't want to do the same pattern over and over because I don't get to keep them and enjoy them there's like to me it's like the fun of trying the pattern and maybe learning something new that keeps it engaging and like keeps me moving forward in them be you know as a knit or as a as a project so anyway that's all I'm saying it's a free pattern um and I love free baby knit patterns uh, I do have a couple of baby blanket books because I was making so many at one point in my life I have a lot of friends who like to have babies um that I like I really have liked a couple of those patterns and um you know though that was like a really great way to get it. so I, I'm from I have two of the like quick and easy 
baby nets or whatever um books and from those two books I've probably made like I don't know 15 or 16 between the two books so that's like a really great bang for your buck okay um let's talk about this sorry this pattern is um by Mandy Huseth who is uh made by Mandy 86 um her blog is maybe just called made by Mandy and um it's a crib size so she also why I say it's called <laughs> baby sea turtle baby blanket is because there's also a baby sea turtle throw blanket maybe there's one other larger than that size but I think that's uh, only the two um I am using a six millimeter hook and various acrylic worsted yarns from my stash so um I can tell you what a couple of them are um I, I sort of mentioned some of them last week. I can show you my progress too. I don't have a real like nice progress marker, but I did put a pin in. So I had about like a, one line or something above this first of the light blues last week. And now um, we are all the way out of the, the, we've got a dark, dark blue, a dark royal blue, a light blue, and then like a very light blue. Um, I'm actually almost done. So I think this one will, uh, the next row is white and then that's the sea foam. And then we're going to do a little bit of sand and then like done. Um, I'll put my hook down. Uh, but so the yarns, like, I think this is Burnat Softy down here. I think this blue is Amigo from Hobby. I think this medium blue here is, this one I really don't know. Um, I think it's, um, the Joanne brand big twist, but it feels like kind of dense, denser than that would be. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and then this light one is, um, uh, line brand pound of love. I know that because that, that one is in a huge bomb. <laughs> um, I, it's actually pretty significantly gone, but I, I use this color to make baby blankets for my best friend's twins a couple years ago. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, this has been a really enjoyable make actually and like pretty quick and like I think without the sea turtles, it looks very much like anything anybody's like grandma made them in in the 80s. <laughs> you know, it's like just a ripple blanket, which is fine. Um, The nice thing is that uh, on your color change row, you're doing through the back loop. So you get kind of like, you know, some dimensionality on the front of it. Uh, if you didn't want to do that, it would probably not change the look at all, really. Um, but adding the sea turtles and like the starfish is very cute. Um, it's cute. I am also, you can see here, I did play some yarn chicken and I lost, um, but not in a significant way. So uh, this, it's almost, it's, you can't really tell even on the camera. Um, you can tell in person if you know to look, but like this yarn, I did run out of whatever this one is. Um, and I had one wave, like, you know, this part left and I was like, I'm absolutely not ripping back this row and like all of this to maybe do one less here to have enough yarn. Like, no. Um, so I had a blue that was kind of close and this one is red heart. I know that. Um, and so if you get up close, you can see that change right here. What are you going to do? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to finish this this week for sure. Hopefully even the turtles, etc., and just be done with this one. Um, uh, this friend, actually, she is a friend I met here in Washington, but she moved back to the East Coast. We're both from Pennsylvania. Um, having kids and her parents are still out there. I totally get it. Uh, she moved back to be closer to family. Um, both her parents and her in-laws are all in Pennsylvania. So, um, but she and her husband and their, their son, who's, um, not this baby, <laughs> she's currently pregnant. Um, but their older son is going to be They're They're all coming out, um, to visit for a couple of days, uh, not this coming week, but the week after. And so I would like to be done so I can just, you know, maybe hand this off to her and say happy second baby. <laughs> 
here you go. Um, she was really great when we brought Theo home from the hospital. You know, as we've talked about before, it was a surprise. And it was also, um, you know, a relatively short timeline that we, she was in the NICU for a little bit that um, she brought me things, uh, including like our bassinet and, you know, just, just some things. And it was, you know, that was a hugely helpful thing. Um, and she was so supportive of us. So, you know, regardless, uh, I love to give a little bit of handmade joy. So let's talk about the last thing on my needles, um, which is my Skyline tea. So I'm skipping, oh, I mean, the, the thing I don't have cast on, which I really need to, is the other tea. Um, Tea. The other test knit in my life, which is the Haley sweater. I have the yarn. I have caked the yarn. I have swatched the yarn. So I am ready to go. But the swatching I did actually, you guys are going to be so proud. And I didn't bring it down here because it's drying and I left it upstairs because I didn't think about it and it was in the bathroom. And now I'm thinking about it, but I'm not going to go get it because the baby is sleeping and I only have a certain amount of time. But I did wash a swatch. Can you believe it? Partly because I've never used this yarn and I really want to make sure that it blooms the way I thought it would so that I, this is accurate for gauge, but also like, I like the density of it because I really like this yarn and I would use it for something else, but I'm, you know, I, this is a really long test knit. I want to do a good job for Iris. This is for Iris H. Um, and you know, I also want to be able to like, it, it, I, we're not using equivalent yarns necessarily. It's pretty close, um, but I can choose something else. Um, but also because it is a little bit thinner of a DK um, and the gauge, I feel like would be fine with actually a regular DK yarn. I want it to make sure that it doesn't like the, because you kind of do like one motif in, um, in the, swatch I wanted to make sure that it doesn't look like holy that was more of my concern actually um yes I want to make sure I'm on gauge etc but I want to make sure it's not at the risk of the fabric I want to actually have for the sweater so that is what you need to know there so let's talk about the skyline tea um skyline tea is a test knit for Tori Yu who is Tori Knits NYC on Instagram and Maybe on YouTube. I don't know if she's on YouTube. Probably. Um, and I... God, I hope I didn't flash anything to you. This also is the bag that holds all of my yarn I got this weekend. Um, I will just show you because this is my tomato moon bag. It's so cute. I still love it. Um, holding this joyful project for me. Sorry, dog. I have made significant progress. I felt like really, really slow to start. I'm not really sure. Just, it's not like anything about it was really crazy or anything, but um, I did go back and look at my skyline because I was wearing it this week and I was incorrect. I think this is also a three by one rib. So it just like, it is, I think a little bit wider because like, probably inches wise, it's the same, but because that's a DK weight, like there are more stitches in this shoulder panel than that one. Um, it's a three by one saddle shoulder construction T. It will have that detail down, you know, to the uh, ribbing or whatever that's at the cuff of the T length. And um, yeah, I finished the back panel. I don't think I put a progress keeper on this one, but back panel wise, like I was not that close to being done with it last week. Honestly, I think I had like just joined or just finished the short rows. So I did the back panel. I picked up the front on each side. I did the neckline shaping and then I joined the neckline and I've knit like 10 rows. You have to knit a certain amount of inches and like what I figured out for me, that's like you know, almost 60. So like I'm a sixth <laughs> of the way done, uh, the front, um, full rows. Then you join and make uh, the rest of your t-shirt, which is so fun. So like this will sit over me. Also it's, it's cute. The color is so cute. Ah, you're on my face. 
Um, I am knitting, going to be helical knitting this. I have a lot of hair. This is going to be a rather um, close neckline tee. Uh, I, we have not seen any pictures of it modeled, which I don't normally do tests where I don't see them modeled, but because I know how the, the DK weight sweater fits me, um, which is a pretty, you know, pretty high crew line. Um, and I love testing for Tori. I just like, I really enjoy her patterns. I, I like the way she constructs clothing. I wanted to do it anyway, even though no, it's not modeled in pictures. So, um, but I am going to he helical knit this. So I, right now I'm switching every other row, you know, on my return, every pearl row, I guess is what I've decided. Uh, and then once I start, once I join in the round, I will, um, helical knit and I can talk more through that. Cause I think it's probably gonna be like the first time in a long time I've helical knit something. Um, not because these skeins were not pretty close. They were very close, but just like the nature of the speckles, I didn't, you know, it's just the recommendation. So I'm going to do it. And I don't hate to helical knit knitting. It actually, cause it's sort of like micro striping. <laughs> it keeps it a little bit interesting for me. Um, I really love it. This, uh, I am making, let's talk about details. Um, so for this, I am making a size five, which is a, um, 50 inch bust. Uh, the recommended ease is four to six positive inches. I'm just under that, which is fine. Um, I am using three millimeter, sorry. I am using and I think last, okay, I think last week I said I was using three millimeter needles for the body. Yeah, so one thing I forgot to mention, <laughs> um, and one of the reasons I don't have a progress keeper in the back is because I actually ripped out the back. So where I showed you last week, I had just finished the short rows, which kind of takes you to like, this is the back panel, like right here. And all of this was done, the sort of like the triangle or whatever, the U shape, um, and these cast on stitches in the back, etc. I had done all of that. And then I, um, I measured a gauge again, because there was something about it that was looking very tight. And I was like, I don't actually know if this is good now. So I had done my gauge swatch in the round. I do knit a little bit looser in the round, generally speaking, because my knit stitches are a little bit like not a lot looser, a little bit looser than my purl stitches because I use a Portuguese pen. If I don't use the pin, my purl stitches are really loose, right? So sort of, you know, the compromise I've made in my knitting. Um, and, and I'm very close, like it's much closer for them to be the same size. I don't know what I did when I was doing my gauge swatch. It's hard. You know, this is why gauge swatches can lie because I was maybe stressed. I was doing something that I was knitting, um, or Maybe I was very relaxed. So I went down a needle size. I did the shoulder panels and all of the short row shaping with the size three millimeter needles. Recommended is three, two, five. I, um, I'm sticking by that for the ribbing, actually the three millimeter needles is bang on. So if you like look at my stitches, it's a little bit stretched out, but my stitches here, that's with the three millimeter needle. Now all my stitches here, get close. This is with a three, two, five. They look very similar in like size and they were looking pretty small. This back, this back part with the three millimeter. So, um, after I measured stitch gauge again, I was like, no, this is going to be too, t it's going to be too small. Um, and that's not good. <laughs> um, not good for a test knit and not good for me to wear. So I ripped out all of the back just down to my, um, saddle shoulders again. I did that on like Monday, I think. And then I just, um, ripped or I ripped through like the, the short rows again, um, and knit the back. Uh, I was wondering why I didn't have a thing on. Yeah. Because I didn't have any back actually. I had to redo that. Not a big deal. Um, and I still made a significant progress this week. So I feel good about the fact that I have the front started at least. Um, and, you know, 
sorry, the back is joined so that this is on barber cord. So it does no stitches fall off. I tied the barber, barber cord. Um, yeah. So I think this will be really nice once I actually get to join in the round. Like I think it's gonna, um, I'll really be able to tell. I do like the color though. Um, so that's good. That is my Skyline tea. I'm excited to have this in the wardrobe because I think this is a relatively plain, um, you know, project doesn't have a ton of texture. There's not tons of going on, but I think that's going to make it very wearable as a t-shirt in my wardrobe for the summer. Okay. That's all the projects. Uh, I have this off my needles. You guys, that's so crazy. I am really ready to cast something else on. Um, I definitely will cast on the Haley sweater this week. I will likely cast on something else also to take this project spot. So I'll be whole at the five projects. Also, because I think I'll be done the baby, the one baby blanket, um, I will feel good about like having five on the needles and one on the hook instead of four on the needles and two on the hook. No, let's talk about, um, let's talk about books and then let's talk about acquisitions because acquisitions will also, again, this week go into a fun thing that we did. So books, I, I haven't talked about this in several weeks, like almost a month, I think, but I did finally finish the Janet Ivanovich book. Uh, the Stephanie Plum 30. It's called Dirty 30. It's the 30th book in the series. And I said this to y'all before. Partly, it's the only thing I was reading on my Kindle. And I had been, like, just as soon as I get in bed, going straight to sleep. <laughs> not reading my Kindle. It's the only place I really read. Um, because I have usually listened to audiobooks while I knit. I'm not often eyeball reading and knitting. I can do that, but it makes me slower at both of those things. Um, and I have so many audiobooks that I want to get through. So, uh, it, it took me, it just took me over the longest time ever. I finished it and I, I said one of my complaints was that this 30 books long and I got hooked because they're pretty fun. They're really fun to start. And then I really wanted her to make a choice on, she's like in a love triangle, essentially. And I wanted her to make a choice. And most books, like some books, it was like every other one. She was like with one or the other dude. And like, I'm a ranger forever. You know, I'm a ranger girl. I don't like Joe. I think she should be with Ranger. I think he's way more supportive. Whatever. Um, there was a significant, sort of a significant thing that happens in this one with this, her relationship status, which I will not give away. But also at the very end, I was like, this is dumb. I will likely read the last, the, I hope, God, I hope it's the last one. I really feel like she needs to let this series die. Um, because I want to know. <laughs> But my mom reads these too, so I guess I could always ask her to give me some spoilers. Or, like, let the world give me spoilers, but that's not that fun. Like, I'd rather read it than just read spoilers. Okay, um, but I did finally finish that. I also finished uh, Mother of the Death and Dawn, which is the third of the uh, War of Lost Hearts series by Carissa Broadbent. It's my first series by Carissa Broadbent. Um, it very much falls into the romantic uh, world. Um, maybe more fantasy than romance, though the romance obviously pays, plays a really big part of it. Um, but there's a lot about political struggles, um, how hard it is to change the world. Uh, even when you have some power. That's like a big part of it. Um, magic, racism. I don't know. There's just like tons of stuff in there. It's, it's very interesting. Um, I liked it. I will, uh, I've already started the, I don't remember what it's called. The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I think that's what it's called. Um, I, that, which is the first of her Nyaxia series. And I'm sure there's like a real name for that. I'm not going to look it up right now. I'll put it up here. Um, 
So I did start that on my Kindle because it's on Kindle Unlimited and not anywhere I could find on audio for free, like not the library, not Audible for free. So I am enjoying it so far. Uh, and maybe it's more engaging than Stephanie Plum because I've read more of that like percentage wise than it took me over like three months to finish. <laughs> I don't actually know how long. A long time to finish Dirty 30. I am also re still reading Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan which is the sixth of the Wheel of Time series and I've made I mean I've, I'm listening to several hours a week. If I want to finish this year I gotta up that a little bit but again this week sort of flew by um, and so yeah. That is what I am reading. Uh, did I read anything else? Hold, please. Oh. Um, oh, and I also finished... I, I finished quite a few things this week. I also finished You Again. And I say it like that because there is a comma. You, comma, again. Um, which is a, ba a book by Kate Goldbeck. It's a standalone. It is... Okay, the very end, um, there was like an author's comment or something. And it, this is very much actually is because she really loves the movie When Harry Met Sally. Like a gender reversal, like told in modern times. So that's really the premise of it. I think it's pretty different than that just because like it's, you know... That's just the premise. Can can people find the right time if they're if they're compatible and they meet at the wrong time in their life, can they overcome that to be each other's person? I liked it. I thought it was really the romance was good. I think if you like a modern romance that's got um that sort of like told over a lot of someone's life so but you don't get lots of other glimpses it's like you only really hear about them from their it's from both of the people's perspectives when they're together right so there's like years that pass and you don't know anything you just kind of get like a caught up on what's happened happened in their life um it's really different than I feel like so many books happen in two weeks right you know like you meet the characters some crazy thing happens they spend two full weeks together they fall in love and like that's the end right and I think that's just a really different storytelling and yeah I liked it I enjoyed it so let's talk about uh acquisitions I'm gonna do a non lemursary acquisition first because I got the yarn for the next gift knit that I will put on my needles. And I say the next one, I do have my mom's field day cardigan. Maybe I'll do that one next. I'm kind of thinking I'll do this one because um, I want to. <laughs> but this is um, what I got was enough yarn to make uh, the, the Daydreamer by Andrea Mowry. I think I flashed a picture up last week. Um, if I have it handy, I'll put it up again. But it is just a um, v-neck pullover with bobbles and like traveling stitches. I don't think there's any true cables in it. Maybe there's like honeycomb. There's honeycomb texture also. Um, and I got Knit Picks yarn for this. Uh, partly because I wanted something affordable, but also because I wanted something that um, like like in a solid I mean it, it, it's a tonal that's what she, the color she picked um and I needed both fluff and uh fingering and I needed that to be relatively affordable for a gift net I like ended up spending about the same amount on the two uh yarn purchases um one was hand dyed so I'm using back loop yarn co for caressas but it's less yarn less balls of yarn um and it's also like I think I got those on sale. So, um, end up being about the same. So I got palette and a loft, a loft I have not used before is their lace weight, um, mohair. So it is, where's the top side? 72% su uh, super kid mohair, which what is super kid mohair? If anyone knows, I mean, I could look this up, but I'm not gonna, um, versus just a kid. Is, is it a really awesome kid? could be um I mean all goats are kind of really awesome because they're so cute <laughs> okay 
<laughs> yeah. And 28% silk. Uh, this I have not used is very similar to, um, like the drops that I have their kid silk. Um, I think that might be a, uh, maybe also 72, 28. Some of the ones you get from hand dyers are 74, 26. I don't know. That makes a ton of difference. Um, I mean, it, it changes the halo a little bit, like how much is the mohair versus the silk in composition. Um, and also like I've used knitting for olive soft silk mohair. Um, I did feel these like actually I, I kind of like tried to do like a neck comparison between this drops and the kid silk that I have. It's hard to tell. Like I actually think this feels softer than drops minimally. It is a slightly more expensive. I think this is something like $8 per skein. These are actually on sale. Um, I didn't wait for them to be on sale. They just were on sale when I was looking. Um, and, but I feel like on the, the neck prickle test, like this maybe feels a tiny bit softer than drops. Very similar to knitting for olive. I think it depends on how you knit it up. Like, I don't know that you can tell from doing this, right? Like, <laughs> just, I feel like wearing it is what would have, um, tell. I have a drops mohair yeah, um, plus fingering, not palette, but, um, and I find it comfortable to wear against my skin, um, but I'm not super sensitive. Lauren also doesn't think she's very sensitive. I don't know that she has any mohair sweaters, but we shall, well, we're going to find out. So it's a little bit of a risk, but also, you know, this is, a uh, palette is, um, oh, sorry, yardage wise, this is 260 yards for 25 grams. I got the accompanying color. These are both called Penny Royal. And palette is, oh, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It is 231 yards for 50 grams, so like a 460 kind of skein. So it's a little bit of a lighter fingering. Um, it feels soft. It's not like the softest yarn. It's a little softer than this um, for being like, this is Merino, this is Highland wool, which I don't, you know, I don't know what kind of sheep that comes from. Um, but it feels like next to skin soft with this, I think it will be nice. It does look, they are the same color, but um, obviously this has shine to it. So it, it's a little bit lighter looking. And the way that like fluff dies, like this, it looks a shade lighter, right? This looks a little bit grayer. This looks a little bit more purple, this bottom one. And I think together they're going to look amazing. I did actually see, I think there is a daydreamer that's made like in this combo and it looks stunning. So this is perfect color for what she wanted. It's going to be great for the pattern too, because it's so light. It's really going to show off like all of the texture. So I'm very excited for that. Um, let's talk about what I bought. So uh, yesterday. So, uh, as we talked about last week, and if you at all follow Explore Knits and Fibers, um, Allie did a Pacific Northwest, Allie and Darren together did a Pacific Northwest, uh, tour. So they were at Rose City Yarn Crawl last week, which, uh, my knit group, we drove down for, and we went to see them at their pop-up at Naughty Lamb. Then we went to Bainbridge to La Mercerie, which is a, a yarn shop on Bainbridge. One of two, also Lamb and Kid is there. Um, and they did another pop up there with totally different yarns. So Rose City Yarn Crawl was Iceland yarn plus a couple of summer tunnels. The uh, La Mercerie pop up was only Seattle. Um, and there were two additional new yarns for the Seattle um, collection. So I think the first time um, the Seattle yarn was ever in the world was last year at La Mercerie. I did not go. I had a very small baby at the time um, and it was very rainy and I was not yet much of a hand dyed buyer. Um, and I... So I heard about it, um, and I was not yet knitting with my knit friend, so I probably would have been coaxed into it, but, um, I wasn't in the knit group until we felt more comfortable leaving our house with a, our, our kid who had some, you know, early in life health concerns. So, um, I didn't get any yarn there, a Seattle collection yarn there. Um, I did get some at Flock. And there were like maybe six tonals, 
Snoqualmie Squim, Gumwall, Pike Place, Rain Shadow, Puget Sound. Six? Um, if I missed one, sorry. Um, but there's also uh, one variegated called Morning Ritual. And that one with the Pike Place color, and that was it. There, there was nothing else, which is fine, right? But and she brought those all back to flock too, um. So I got to buy some Pike Place then, um. But, uh, for this trip, she also made a new colorway called Bainbridge and one called Olympic National Forest, um. And those are both very fun. Uh, maybe North Cascades. I don't actually know when that colorway, if that's like a national park color. Um, but that was also there this weekend. Um, yeah. So also when I was at Flock, like the EKF booth was real overwhelming. There were like a lot of people in line and in the booth the whole time. Um, I did get some yarn there, but the Seattle yarn was like what was on the main table and was going really fast. And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> and I wanted to see it in person too. Um, so I didn't buy any other Seattle yarn when I was there. I do live in the area and I do love all these Seattle colors. I really love Puget Sound. Um, and I imagine they will come back in the future. I don't know if they'll be at Flock this year. Um, Allie hinted in her live that she might be doing something different. It sort of depends, uh, which is great. I mean, I think don't stifle someone's creativity just because you love the yarn. You we will all move on. She does lots of favorites collections and brings colors back. Um, and so, yeah, that is what I have to say about the Seattle collection. Um, but getting to see it live was really fun. Um, and now that I know that I like to knit with some non-superwash, it was also fun to see those colors non-superwash. So what did I buy as I rambled on about just explore knits for a little bit? Here is what I bought. I bought two, a sweater, one sweater quantity. And I bought it in the earthy DK, DK base, which is a hundred percent non-superwash merino. It is a very soft. I have some earthy DK already in my house. Um, from the Spain collection, but this is 246 yards for 100 grams. I did also buy some Earthy DK last week. In the color, Squim. Um, that's pretty true. To, I think that's reading grayer than it maybe looks in person. It does have a purple cast to it for sure. It is a gray purple though. Like this is not, it's not just gray. It's not just purple. It's a gray purple. It's really pretty and I very much enjoy this color. Um, I, this is my plan as of right now and plans have been known to change, but I got enough to make a Mila cardigan. This is a new pattern by Sari Nordlin. I mean, I don't know, came out two or three weeks ago. I don't have any intention to cast it on right now, but you never know. Um, and this is a reversible cardigan. I'll put up both pictures so you can see what it looks like um, on both sides. And there is the side that is like the Mila, cause you know, she like, she has a pullover. I think she's coming up with a summer top too. Um, that is like the Mila pattern. You know, she does this with like her charted uh, cable or lace patterns often get put into other um, garment styles with the same um, stitch pattern. This one is uh, the Mila side is got like the, intricate kind of braidy look and then the other side sort of looks like diamonds and that is really fun and I don't know how she did it and I also want to make it just because that's so cool <laughs> like I don't think there's that many knit garments that are reversible like I wonder also how like sleeves are picked up in other thing other things so that it like looks nice on both sides like that's part of me is just so curious that I need to make it. Um, the other way that it's reversible is that you have buttons that are snaps. So no buttons, there's no button holes. It's just snaps. So, um, and I think you could equally do this without any kind of buttons. And I think if I made it, I would probably wear it for a little bit or see if I liked it without any snaps. Um, because I think like drape and size wise, it would like look really nice. It's a little bit cropped. It's very cute. That's the plan. What else did I buy? I bought um, Bainbridge. So this is Bainbridge and Gumwall. 
this is not a color and I'll show it to you in a second but this is not a color I would ever wear anywhere near my face it's far too yellow neutrally tan color but it has a lot of purple like a, the squim color almost in it um and I think it would be I really like I like yellow socks so I think I'm gonna use this for socks and that's it was like what I was like oh that would be so fun for socks so you know there's the color gum wall with it there's a little bit of pink in here like I can pick a place you can see a little bit of in here you know when your skein is twisted it's hard to tell how much of it actually is in there like if I untwist a little bit there's definitely more in there um so it, it looks really nice with I think it would like also look equally nice with some squim um but yeah I think socks and I've not bought like um any many sock sets this year any sock sets this year so one one because I want that color um the other, I actually bought two sock sets this one though I don't think will be socks um this is uh North Cascades National Park so I think this is in the National Park collection actually um but this one is tealy and green definitely blue and green in it um with some very light patches and blue being like the green leans teal but there's like blue in there true blue um and then this is Puget Sound which is so fun so now I have three uh well including swim four four of the Seattle's exclusive colors just through two sock sets and a sweater um and then a national park color I don't have any other national park colors I've never bought from the national park collection there are a couple that I really love but like I think she did national parks like at a time last year, like right after flock. I was just the time where I was like, I'm not buying yarn anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. It's pretty this though. I, I think I'll either do a hat or a like bandana, cowl, scarf, shawl, something, um, with it may or may not use the mini, but I do really love this mini. So I want it to have it have a little bit of Puget Sound in my life. I think I will likely get some later in my life when it's back at another time when I feel like I've made a significant number of these um, beautiful blue things into t-shirts or what have you, whatever they will be. And I do not feel bad adding more blue <laughs> to the equation. Okay. Um, I bought one other thing from La Mercerie. So what we did is we left um, the Seattle area on Friday and took a ferry over and we stayed not on Bainbridge, but we stayed on the peninsula. Um, and it was partly just to, to have a knit night. We had a friend, our friend Bridget came from out of town. Um, not even really to go buy yarn at EKF. That wasn't her mission. It was just to come hang out and like what a fun weekend because then we were doing a knit weekend. So it wasn't like she would just be staying with one of us and only seeing one person or you know, having just a little knit night. It was like doing a little trip. So we um went out and there were five of us. We stayed in the house. We did girl dinner, which is snacks. Um, It was pretty healthy. We had a lot of vegetables going on in the snacks vegetables, dip, chips, cheese, chicken nuggets, all the things that you need for a girl dinner. Um, and then we got up early and we went to the pop-up. Um, we were not first in line this time. That honor is reserved for a friend, Renna, and I'm so happy for her <laughs> to be first. La Mercerie also does the pop-up really differently than like have the pop-up at Naughty Lamb. I'll talk about that in one second, but we um, waited in line at the pop-up, which was so fun because it was like, it was dark when we got there and that's the time change more than anything, people, um, which did just happen last week. So um, it was so fun though it was like adult camp like people when they would show up we were like hi welcome <laughs> come hang out with us and knit and because we were all there pretty early we had like lots of time to knit and chill and it was just really like people were showing off their knits they were showing off their projects it was like a giant knit night and it was super fun um people were also just like yeah, we, we chatted with some other people we know. Um, so like I got to say hi to Claire Jackson, who is um, perfectly knotted and Coley from Paisley Knits came over. We chatted with her for a while. 
um kate from katesville knits who i have mentioned multiple times because she also portuguese pearls but she has some really great instagram short tutorial videos on helical knitting which i um have watched and i've recommended to people before um as like a great explanation for it um yeah just we met other people uh we had like the, the gals next to us in line were super nice. Um, there was a coffee shop that opened just after we got there and we got to have some coffee, extra coffee in line. And like, no one was like weird because someone would go out of line to pee, you know, like their friends, friends held their spots and stuff. And it was, yeah, it was great. Um, then we went in, we bought yarn and then we went to brunch and then we went back because it was, they, La Mercer is pretty small in the current space. They are moving. They are now closed for um inside shopping as of today so you can only buy online right now and i don't know how long it's going to be two to three weeks the new space is already being set up but they were like the walls and things but they're moving like their furniture over there so they're doing that now asap i don't know when they start monday or something <laughs> i'm sure jess is going to try to do it as quickly as possible um Oh, we got to see Jess and Maya and like the whole crew. It was so fun. I love going to La Mercerie, but, um, they are moving. So, and I'm really excited because they're actually moving into the old church mouse space, which is the first LYS I was ever into. And, um, I have very fond memories of that space. Uh, way back when I had like, I went there before I was knitting any kind of garment and I was just like, you know, I like yarn, um, but mostly knitting baby blankets still. So it like hadn't really dabbled far outside of acrylic yarn. And so I think I've done some wool projects, but, um, you know, it was fun to feel a lot of other textures and sort of see some label brands that now make more sense to me. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, after we went to brunch though, and we actually peeked into the new space because it's like it's still on Bainbridge it's like just a, a block and a half away um we went back down to the shop to uh actually look around it was Bridget's first time being at La Mercerie that space is going away but like the, vi the vibe will stay um and also for her just to see all the stuff that's in the shop and for us to like see if anybody else wanted to get anything um there was EKF left over, which I think it's all going to go online today. Um, there was actually a lot left over. The line was not as long as I thought it would be. I think a lot of people, like whoever was going to be there came early. And then just the regular traffic. Um, it was a beautiful day. So beautiful. Like it feels like summer right now this weekend. The weather will likely go back to being miserable and rainy. But we had a whole month of just rain and gray. And so having a really nice 60 degree 60 plus degree day was wonderful um we yeah we everything about it was enjoyable <laughs> i heard last year was raining and cold and terrible and all the things and we just did not have that problem this year so that was great um i don't know if because last year it was like hard to wait people there were less people that came maybe it's also because it's not the first time seattle collection has been seen but there are definitely not as many people there overall um and that's fine they i mean a lot of yarn was still sold but there was actually some of most everything left not everything um snoqualmie there were just a little bit of surrey left that color always sells out first it's a beautiful green color. That's not a green I would pick for me. Um, also, like the Olympic National Forest was the other new color, which I think like would pair with Snoqualmie really well. I think that's maybe the sock set. Also not colors I would like. It's a little too like forest floor green for me. Um, and I like hunter green as the darkest. Uh, but yeah, so we wandered back into the store. We said hi to Allie and Darren and got to chat with them for a little bit. And I got this. Um... This is Moondrake um, and it's birthday cake. So this sold out and like very quickly. Um, this is a La Mercerie three year birthday yarn sock set. Um, it By the time I saw Jess's email, it was like during a work day, maybe like last week or the week before. Um, I went online. I was like, oh, maybe I'll snag one. Totally gone. <laughs> 
which is fine. That's so exciting. But she did reserve some for in-store shoppers, which is so sweet. That's such a thoughtful thing. Um, this is Sparkles Stardust. It's 410 yards for 100 grams, 80% super fine merino, 15% nip, 5% stellina. And the mini is, um, this is the MSN mini, this one. Um, and it is 60% merino, 20% nylon, 20% silk. It's very interesting that she writes it like that on the label, even though MSN means merino, silk, nylon. So, but she put merino, nylon, silk. <laughs> Just an observation. Um, but if you look at this yarn, please get a, like, take a good look here. This yarn is incredible. And I don't think I noticed this in the picture as much because, like, it's a really... It's hard to capture on camera. This Stellina is not gold and it is not silver. Please stop trying to focus on my head. Focus on the yarn. It is, Lord, it is a rainbow. It is rainbow Stellina. I don't really feel like you can see that that well. It just kind of looks shiny. Um, you can maybe catch a little bit of the pink, but it's like, pink blue gold red I think it's maybe most of the colors are in there it's incredible <laughs> uh I don't know who saw it Bridget saw it and she like picked it up and I was like oh my gosh I think I actually need that um I don't have any plans for it but this also could be like a shawl thing I just feel like it's too fun to put on your feet um and like it's the the neps are like super rainbowy and they they pop out a lot like it's just got so much dimension um i'm going to just you know it's a special yarn it's a special occasion i'm going to just put this over here for to think and dream about some sort of one one skein shawl thing or or even something like if i have complementary yarn or darker colors like this would also like really pop if i use black with it there is black neps in it or blue Okay, that's all the yarn. I bought a lot of yarn. Not nearly as much as last weekend. Um, and I, I knew I, I stuck to my guns. I knew I wanted to get Squim. I knew what project I wanted to use it on. I'd been thinking about that for several weeks. Um, Cause we knew we were going like months ago um, as soon as she announced it. And I, um, I, I knew that there were going to be new colors, so I was, like, likely going to get at least one sock set, um, but yeah, I just, we were sitting in line, also still thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to get the one sweater quantity. I will get Puget, Puget Sound in the future. Um, okay. That was our fun weekend. I had a great time. I always have a great time with my knit friends. They're the best. I also just, like, getting to meet other knitters like it felt like a mini flock celebration because people like I don't know there are other things where like you wait online for like the release of something people can get like weirdly competitive I will say actually it felt even more different than Naughty Lamb partly because Naughty Lamb like there was you know, we were at the front of the line but also like there was only a little bit of the building and we made friends with the person that was right behind us and I talked to a couple other people online but like then it wrapped around and so there was not as much of this like dynamic of you could see everybody the way that this line happened is like it kind of like wandered back and forth a little bit <laughs> like right in front of the building there are some steps like shallow steps that lead up to the nursery and that was actually great because like we were all together like a mass of people together um and yeah, everyone was just like way more chatty, visiting with people they knew down the line. Um, maybe that's part of it is that there were just like more people who who, who knew each other that were there. Um, but it was, it was very fun. Um, and everybody was so, so sweet. Oh, but I was going to tell you, it was like the way they just did this too. And I think maybe this is another reason why it felt less like stressful or crazy is that like when at Naughty Lamb when they opened the doors they really didn't crowd control they just like let 80 people in the store at once and it's a pretty small store also like just not a lot of walking room um La Mercerie is a lot more open than that but uh they had the table sort of right by the doors that they opened and they let people in but they had the yarn 
in like a cubby behind them and there are two people with a table in front of that area and they had one of everything out on the table and you could touch it and you could see um and then they had um like the people working in the shop actually pick the yarn out for you so with that in mind everybody sort of like knew what they wanted um i'm sure people some people made snap decisions and were like oh i actually do really love this on whatever base and asked for that um but they had uh you know the staff like picked out your order and then gave it to you in your basket or in your arms or whatever and that was really great because it just it was a very different kind of, it was a yarn control, not just crowd control. So like people were not swarming the table to try to, you know, talk over each other or whatever. They just stayed in line, came up to the table, gave their order. And then, you know, and hopefully, you know, things were left for them. Everybody who bought Snoqualmie, I mean, who knows? I don't know how many people got Snoqualmie. It wasn't me. I did not buy any of it. Actually, I actually think our entire, in our entire group of five, no Snoqualmie was purchased. So it wasn't us. Um, but yeah, it was like very different experience. Cause I was like, yes, I would like my sweater quantity of swim and these two sock sets. They handed it over in five seconds. And then I just walked to check out right away. Um, I was actually the first per person to check out because even though Brenda was in front of us, she had a big order. Um, and then I went first in, the, in our group because I had a pretty small order. So there we go. That's the difference really did make a difference for the buying experience. Yes, I did not buy extra because I didn't have just like time to wait at the table, though we did go back and I certainly could have bought some extra then. Um, there were people there that like we saw in line who went through an early thing and then they were going back through and like one of the girls, she wanted to make a great gingham. So she was like really comparing colors. That was like what was left over and just trying to make the decision because that is a hard decision to make. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> uh we had a great time the ferry was actually not terrible um either direction which you know anything about Washington State ferries they are in these current days a little less reliable than they maybe once were um in timing and other things and the ferry that we got on actually was late which was in our benefit um but yeah with the end of the day we were pooped we got up early um And even though we sat in camp chairs out in front of La Mercerie for a significant portion of the morning, like just being up early and being social for several hours at once is hard. <laughs> we all needed food really bad. So brunch was great. Um, but yeah, like by the time we got off the ferry and uh, wonderful sweet Katie is the one that drove uh, the whole weekend. Um, drove everybody to their destinations like I, I think everybody's like meter of of being social was just like very quickly falling off a cliff so I had to go to a baby birthday party right after this I could have been driven home but I would I was like I'm here um it, Katie luckily was dropping off in the neighborhood so I wasn't like she wasn't going far off her way to drop me there um and it was really nice to see my niece. Wish her a happy birthday. She had a Barbie birthday party, um, which was very cute. Uh, she was still wearing her dress by the time I got there and then very promptly took it off because she's three. <laughs> and it was warm. So that's what three-year-olds do. Uh, and then, yeah, like, it was also very fun to see my baby and some of, uh, you know, our cousins and other people were there. And now the weekend's over almost. It's not very heartbreaking, but I feel like I've got, you know, grown-up chores to catch up on before I will be able to edit this and get it out there. So it might not be out till Monday, but for everyone, I hope you all had a really wonderful, lovely weekend. Um, if you haven't seen or gotten an email or seen it on Instagram, I'm sure that the overflow is either up or will be up very soon for the EKF yarn. So if you want to snag some Seattle colors, especially the new ones, there was Bainbridge left over yesterday. We left before the shop was open. So I cannot guarantee this for you, right? But there was some, um, you know, if you want to grab some yarn, now's your chance. I'm sure it will go fast. Naughty Lamb, they got theirs up like Friday, which is a week after the event. And a lot of what the overflow like went really quickly. So 
um, as it does. Yeah, we had a great time. It's always so nice to see Allie and Darren. It's also just so fun to do knit things, to hang out with your knit friends, to talk about yarn, to talk about project plans, all of that fun kind of stuff. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed my two back-to-back -back EKF event videos. I am not going to be doing another one until Flock. We will not see them again until then. Um, and yes, though it was super fun, I uh, don't have plans to buy much of anything until Flock. So I'm hoping that my acquisition portion will go down significantly. Though I have bought from two, three pre-orders over this quarter. Those will all arrive hopefully before Flock. So we'll get those um, as they come in. I don't know when any of them will be here. I did buy like a little bit from Treehouse. Um, like a very small amount. I, I, I got something for my mom. I got her a shawl quantity and a tea for me. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm not on a no buy ban. Um, if something pops up that I really love, I just am feeling pretty saturated. Oh, here's a fun thing that I want to talk about is I watched Leslie's, um, from Knit California. I watched her spring clean. She talks about how to de-stash your yarn, how to purchase thoughtfully. A lot of the stuff I've already started doing, like purchasing colors I actually want to wear, um, paring down some of my like buying of random one skeins, making sure they're, you know, I have projects in mind for things, all that kind of fun stuff she talks about. But she also reorganizes her yarn shelves in one of the videos. And I am not going to do it to de-stash, which is what she did. But I think I will um, go through my yarn this week and also rearrange a little bit, partly because I film and I don't like these bins to be in my filming space. Where is this one here? Um, I just don't like it. It doesn't look as pretty as the rest of my yarn. And I think I am ready to just rearrange a little bit. And it's not an easy way for me to move my frame and leave those where they are. So I think I'm going to move them and rearrange a little bit of the frame. Plus I have some other yarns. Like this is also mostly scrap yarn on this side. And, um, there are some scraps that are not in here. And like, these are not sorted particularly well because I didn't have a lot of scraps last year. And I've, as I've finished more sweaters, I mean, last year, early last year, when I did some of this original, these, um, bin organization. Anyway, I am planning to, um, reorganize some of that also like just for sanity um and uh and also like this bin right behind my shoulder not anything about it it's fine um but those are all like sort of the balls so they're a lot smaller and I don't like that I can't see the number of all the things that are in there so I'm gonna also remove those and really keep just kind of like um full skeins in this I may also move some fiber over here that's really pretty so I can show it off. Um, and I have two bookshelves on the side of my office that I'm going to just reorganize because the space is not used very efficiently. When I'm done, maybe I'll take a picture. Maybe I'll take a before and after picture. Probably not because my office is really messy right now and so I don't need a before picture of that. Um, I have a before picture of my shelves from, uh, maybe I'll just do the shelf and the shelf and then I will take an after picture of the shelf and the shelf because those things will be clean. Uh, yeah, but I think it will help me like I have to spend a lot of time in this office. So to really, really love the view, it's also like, this is my backdrop of my camera for work. And right now you can see the um, fiber shelf and the fiber shelf just looks a little bit disorganized, partly because of like certain things are in bags and, you know, just like the way it is. Um, and I want it to look really nice also for my regular life. So there we go. That's all for me. My kiddo just woke up from her nap, so I got to sign off. Um, but thank you so much for joining. Let me know if you have a tank recommendation for me. Let me know what you are working on. I hope you guys had a really wonderful weekend and wonderful week and that you, you know, as we're rolling into spring and a lot of the northern hemisphere that you guys are getting some nice weather like we did yesterday. Um, I don't think ours will hold out, but we're all going to, we, we absorb some vitamin D to take with us for the next <laughs> A little bit of rain. Um, 
But as always, thank you for watching. If you would like to subscribe, please do. Every new one I see makes me so happy. Um, give this video a like, write the comments below, start, you know, keep conversation going. And also if you have anything that you don't want to write in comments below, you can always message me on Instagram. That is also linked. Um, I will talk to everybody next week. Thank you. Bye.